Now, hello, this is the second part of our video uh, tutorial on the sailing simulator, and it's important here to take a look at part one, uh, part one because that leads up to where we are now. But right now I have a simulation running. I want to just illustrate the whole point I want to make at first here is to go back to this yellow dot. I want to show this yellow dot. And this is the dashboard over here. Recall that you turn it on and off by clicking here, or up anywhere in here, inside here. And then this is the polar display. And it's showing we have a wind. Now I have forced this wind. I have forced the wind to be uh, we've got, we had to load a, load a grib file in here just to open up this uh, configuration file. And then once the configuration was open, I forced the wind to be 14 knots at 020. And that's the wind we're seeing here. And here's our boat running. And uh, in this, with this, say it, with this uh, polar diagram, a classic 40 at uh, a true wind angle of 50 degrees, the boat speed is 8.6 knots. And that is all determined by the polar and the wind speed and the angle we're pointed. And I just want to illustrate one point here, and I'm going to then pause the video to show you this. But you see, this yellow dot is how fast we're actually going. Our percent of the polar is 100%, and that's because we're running a simulation. It doesn't know anything different. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop, and I'm going to... Uh, put on an external simulator as if we're sailing on the water with the data coming in on our GPS, our NEMA stream of data, and then this will be showing uh, instruments uh, not from the simulator but from the data that we're getting from the NEMA stream. So let's look at all of this and I'm going to pause and come right back. Okay, I'm back, and now we're going to see. I think I have this set up right to do. And so what I want to do, first of all, I'm going to just stop this simulation. Command, Option, S. I'll click it, and then Option, S. So this, okay, let's see. Option, S, okay. Oh, I keep turning it on and on. All right, so it's off. Simulation is off now. And so now I have a simulator, an external simulator here that I'm going to run, and I've got the course set up to the same course we had, uh, 70 degrees, and then the wind. This simulator is also creating a wind of uh, 14 knots at 020, um, and no current. So we can shut this wind off. Uh, that wind is not there. It's going to be coming from as if we measured in our wind instruments. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay, so the way I would start this then is just uh, start NEMA. So here are the signals coming in from our GPS, uh, from our GPS uh, and our NEMA and our wind instruments and so forth right here. That all looks good. And let's see how the instruments are populated. 50, 8.6, 70, that all looks right. Now I have to find my simulator. Okay, here's the simulator. And so, okay, so here's what I want to show. Here's what you would see. Now, I'm driving at 8.6 knots with my sails. Remember, this I'm simulating sailing under with my sails, and I'm sailing at uh, uh, 8.6 knots, and I am making here, I'm right on the curve. Now suppose I'm out there sailing now and I'm not making 8.6 knots. Let me see if I can raise this. There's 9.3 knots. You see now I'm going 9.3 knots uh, like that under the same conditions, same wind angle. And you see I'm still at um, 50 degrees true wind angle, but now I'm going 9.3. So when you're out there sailing and then you turn on this uh, little mini polar over here, you're going to see that you're outperforming your polar. Your, your yellow dot is up off of this line. So that's a very nice display. Let's go. So I'm actually sailing 9% higher than my polar. Let me go a little bit higher like that. Now I'm sailing, uh, uh, let's see, that's 9.7. So you see this is shot up to here, and I'm sailing 13% higher than my polar on this wind angle. Or I could have less, less luck, and let's say I go out and I start sailing. Let's see if that's going to go down here. 
So let's say uh, I'm only going 7.7 knots. Now it takes a while. So okay, so now I'm out. Oh, I'm all tuned up the same way. I got 50, 50, 50, uh, 50 degrees true wind angle. I still have 14 knots from O to O. And now, but I'm only sailing. I got all the sails trimmed up as best I can, but I'm only going 7.7 .7 knots. So this display, percent of polar, tells me I'm only doing 90% of what I should be doing if my polar data were correct. And that's reflected on the mini polar by showing your actual speed here is below the projected polar speed. And that's all I wanted to show with this, uh, this example of showing how this yellow dot works. So I'm going to pause here and then turn off this other external, this other external simulator um, uh, and come back to the program. One moment, please. Okay, so I've uh, this discontinued the external look at like real instruments and we're now back with the uh, with the program and with the simulation mode and I wanted to show one other thing while I'm thinking of it let me turn the simulator on option s so the simulator's on and I let me go back up to where we were which was uh, a true wind angle of uh, 50 50 degrees and as I come up to there, let's see, 30. And you see yourself, now this little dot's going to be hanging right on the curve, obviously, the whole time because uh, uh, we're, we're uh, okay, one, let me go one more click, 47, 40, oh, wait a minute. Okay, it's turning, right, 49, 50. Okay, 50. So that's back, 8.6 knots, where the yellow dot's right on the line, everything is going like that. But let me just use this as a reminder, and it shows another something about the program, not exactly part of sales simulation, but it's all related in the sense that here we're, uh, in other words, what we have is a true wind, a true, we told the program what the true wind is, we forced it to be 14 out of 20, 14, uh, 14 knots from direction 20, and then, then we put the boat somewhere and we started sailing, and then the angle that we make, you've got the true wind angle, that's the angle that the boat makes with the wind angle here, which is 50 degrees. But I want, and then the apparent wind angle is what you read, this is what you actually read from your instruments. So when you're back on the boat with your real boat, what you're actually measuring is the apparent wind angle and apparent wind speed, and then you have your knot meter speed, uh, and then you have your uh, knot and your heading, your compass heading, true heading, and your knot meter speed. So this is what you measure on your boat. You measure the apparent wind speed with the anemometer, and the wind vane tells you 31 degrees is that angle off the bow, and you get your knot meter and your compass. So I made, and you can always do this. Let me just show this edit pathway, wind triangle. And I want to just hide it, hide it, show it. Okay, so what I did here was just lay in a triangle, the way you would solve for these wind angles, the way you would solve these wind angles um, if you were doing it, if you didn't have a computer and you had to graphically do it. So this, this line of the vector here, uh, let me see, that's 8.6 knots. Well, you would have to, let me reverse this for the moment to see how that goes. So you see, this is your boat speed down here. This is 8.6 in direction, well, 69.5, that's 70. So this is your boat speed like this. This vector here then, um, this vector here is the apparent wind angle, and that's 20.6, 20.6, and this angle here, this angle between here to here, is got to be 70 minus 31, what's that, 39 degrees. So if I just reverse this again, let's see, edit, uh, reverse, then you see that's pointing to 039 and 20.6. So this is your boat speed and your boat heading going that direction. 
This is the apparent wind of 20.6 knots coming from uh, 31 degrees to the left here, like that. So this vector that's left here, that's computed, that's always the true wind. So this angle between here and here, see this is up here going uh, 70, and then this is 50, uh, 50 degrees to the left. So this is uh, got to be uh, 20, and you see it's 200 that way, 180 minus 180 is 20. So this is direction 020, and then the, this li line length from here to here would be 14, uh, 14 knots. Let's see, does it tell us 13.8? Uh, I don't have the solution exactly right. But anyway, that's the wind triangle, and that computer is just doing all that for you automatically. So I wanted to just be sure that we got that right. Let me go pathways and then just hide this guy for now. Edit pathway this, and I'm going to just hide, uh, hide this guy. Okay. So that is that. So now then I want to go over just a couple other points about this, especially with regard to the uh, velocity made course, which is right here. So I'm going to just pause again until I get my uh, notes in order here. Okay, hello. I'd like to carry on now and look a little bit about this VMC. And uh, to note that um, it's, always, it's always the most important thing, a velocity-made course, is determine how fast you're getting to where you want to go. And uh, however, if, and, and generally it could be different on both tacks, but I just want to point out here that going to weather, it's maybe not as always as, as valuable a tool as it is when going downwind. But let me just illustrate part of that. In the real world, uh, you know, when you have current and when you have asymmet sails are not exactly symmetric, then you still have to always watch it and pay attention to it. Because remember, it's a real number. Uh, let me just go up here and just say, click this, I'm on this uh, go to button, and just say, here's where we want to go up here. That's where we want to go. So now we have a uh, velocity made course. That's a velocity in this direction. This is our projection here. Uh, let me go back here. That's a six minute. That's projecting over six minutes. You know, I could go up to like 12 minutes. And so there's where we're going to be in 12 minutes. And here's where we want to go. And we're making good 3.6 to that. And uh, then uh, but my point, like if we could also put on ley lines here from the grib file. So here's, uh, here's the way. So obviously we want to go over here and then up here. But it won't matter if, if, if there's no current really and, then the, and, the, and it's uniform conditions over the race course and your uh, trim is the same on both sides, then it won't matter how you get here. The fact that this is closer just means that the point that we're going to is not exactly upwind. Like, see, upwind is like 020 here. So if I had put this over here, you see at something like 020, then we would be right in the middle. But we're right now a little closer to this ley line over here. But it still won't matter. The time it takes us to go over here and then all the way up to here is going to be exactly the same if we tack now and go up to here, over to here, up to here, and then over to here. That's going to always be exactly the same. And you can experiment with that. I'm not going to do it right now. But you can just go right here and say, to grib, uh, uh, draw a grib reckoning. And then we know that 45 degrees is the best angle here. So just say on leg one, you're going to go uh, 45. 45, oh, you're going to start out. We're on the, this guy on the left. We're on this tack now. So that'd be minus 45. And then you can just uh, crank it up a couple, like, you know, go, go up here, like there. And now tack. So I make I take away this, and then I'm going to two. Oh, I did it! I did it in the wrong order. Okay, so this means I went up this way the first tack. Now I'm going to switch over and tack number two, and go to minus 45. But you can play with this this remarkable tool called the grib reckoning, which is sailboat dr. And now crank. That's five minutes. Go over here, then tack again, and so forth. So you can play with that. Uh, reset. Uh, 
and, and see that. So it, it really doesn't matter. But now let's turn around and say we're not going upwind like this, but now we're going, see when you're going upwind, then generally you're gonna be sailing to weather, to your best tack to weather uh, regardless, because it doesn't matter which way you're going, as long as it's, the, the mark is to weather, you're gonna be sailing at this 45 degrees period, and you know, whatever the polar tells you, you're gonna sail at that angle till you tack and get up there. You, you sometimes wanna minimize tacks, because a tack, each tack costs you some time, so you want to minimize tax, but at the same time, you don't want to do it like one big tack where you, you get too far off the sort of like here's a rum line from here to here. You're a little better off, you know, kind of like tacking up the rum line rather than taking one big long one going over here because then the wind could shift and so forth. But beside those things, let's just move this point. Now, let's see if I can do this. Oh, yeah. Let me just say we want to go down. Here's where we want to go, like this. So first of all, I'm going to, okay, let's get rid of this. So first of all, I've got to turn around and start going in that direction. So let me just turn the boat around and get going downwind. Now I'm head to wind, and now I'm coming back around. And I'm going to go up here, position, reset the track, and then go back to the polar. Okay, so now, all right, so now I'm off sailing. And I'm going to see a couple, oh, this way, uh, this one is not downwind. I'm going to just lay that line. Let me just move this guy over here. Okay, so, um, so now I've, I, here's where I want to go. And so, but here's now the trick that this, this program does for you. And then again, the whole idea here is just show you what the tools are like. And then you just sit and play with it. And it's a simulator and you just simulate various sailing conditions, turn on current, turn off current, turn, make wind different directions, move your waypoint around. The, that's the idea, the power of it. But here's what this program is telling us. And we have an article that discusses this, but this pink dot here is gonna be the best way to get to this moment. Mark. This red dot, this red line here, this red arrow is going to be this heading right here. It's going to be the one that takes you right there. But that's not going to be the fastest VMC. And let's see, do I have a plot? Yeah, I could actually plot this. I don't, well, the plot's a little messy right now because we just did that big whereabout. But, um, but let's just come here and uh, let me just keep turning, uh, turning. And you see this coming down here like this. And uh, here's where we are on the polar diagram and so forth. Now, somewhere around this pink dot is going to be the best speed right there, right? Let me just pause for a minute. What was that? That's 11.2 at a true wind angle 143. Now, let's just keep on going, uh, keep on going. And uh, just to see that's true. Now, the red line is telling you you're pointing right straight to the mark. Uh, so that's, that shows up here on this diagram. But you see on this picture here that that was the best. Now we're down to 9.9. .9. If I want to get back to the best speed, I'm going to have to turn right a little bit and uh, come back up over here. And so there, 11.1. And so for also you can go up here to the, no, it's a waypoint, waypoint. Go up here to, uh, Go up here to the Waypoint tab on your dashboard and look here. It's going to tell you, here's your best heading, 230. Well, I'm not quite at it. I'm at 234. But it says your best heading is going to be 235, and you're going to be 11.2 knots. So that's the VMC, Velocity Made Course. That's how you choose the best heading to get to where you want to go. Now, Often, we're, and later in the course and so forth, we compute optimum routes based on other factors. This is a kind of little bit idealized here. We got totally constant wind. We're assuming the wind's gonna be the same when we get there. When we do this routing based on uh, uh, isochrones, then it actually projects ahead and looks at what the wind might be when you get there, and it'd be a little different course. But this concept of velocity made course is always a fundamental thing to keep in mind uh, to answer the question, am I on the best jibe? 
you know, when you could go either way and it wasn't clear. This is the this is what you have to ask yourself. Are these numbers? Look at these numbers when you ask yourself, am I on the right jibe at the moment or should I jibe? Things like that. So I'm going to pause there. In fact, I think I'm going to stop there for now on, on this uh, sailing simulator of part two.